In Activity 9, Plant Life Cycle, students calculate and record data on seed production of their original plants. The students first complete the pea life cycle chart, then describe the stages in the life cycle of a pea plant. Finally, students plant second generation pea seeds. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 9, Parts A and B, bags of gravel, pea life cycle pictures, plastic wrap, rubber bands, potting soil, masking tape, and water sprinklers. You will also need to provide pea plants from Activity 2, fresh pea pods, scissors, glue or paste, a felt tip marker, newspaper, pea plants, scrap paper, and tap water. To prepare for the activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 9, Parts A and B for each student. Fill the water sprinklers with tap water and set up a distribution station with potting soil, gravel, rubber bands, plastic wrap, and water sprinklers. Also have enough dried peas for each student to have some. Retrieve the two remaining pea life cycle pictures of a mature plant with seed pods and a seed pod for use in the activity. Ideally, you should conduct this activity once students' plants have developed their own seed pods and those pods have been given a chance to dry out. If they are not present, purchase fresh pea pods from the grocery store. Display the mature pea plants that have grown from the peas you planted prior to the beginning of this module. To begin the activity, have students retrieve their pea plants and ask, what can you see on your plants that was not there before? Students should notice pea pods on their plants. Distribute to each team of two a fresh pea pod and demonstrate how to open the pod to observe the peas. Make sure students understand that the science classroom is not a place for tasting. Then ask students what is inside each pod. Students should find peas, which are seeds, in each pod. Inform the class that a seed pod is a dry, hollow fruit with seeds in it. Then ask how are these seeds different from the seeds you planted in Activity 2. Students should respond that these seeds are plump, moist, and green, whereas the seeds planted in Activity 2 were wrinkled, dry, and tan. Explain that fresh seeds can be planted only after they have dried. Help students understand that the seeds came from the flowers and were formed when the fertilized egg inside the pistil developed. Then instruct students to remove the dried pods from their pea plants. Ask students, how are these seeds like the ones that you planted? Students should have observed that they were wrinkled, dry, and round. Then ask, which seeds do you think might have the best chance of sprouting? Lead them to realize that usually the larger, plumper seeds have the best chance of sprouting because they are often the strongest seeds. Give each student a copy of Activity Sheet 9, Part A, and instruct each student to count the number of pods on his or her plant. Then, students should count the total number of peas in all of the pods and record their answers on the activity sheet. Discuss with the class what happened to their plants during the time they were growing. Students may have observed that some plants may have grown faster than others, and some may have died. Ask students how can you explain the differences in growth among the pea plants. Students may note that some plants were closer to the light source, some have received more or less water than others, or that some of the plants have been diseased. Next, bring students' attention to the pea life cycle chart and ask, what should we now add to the chart? Students should add a mature plant with seed pods. Have a volunteer show where to put the picture on the chart and tape it in place. Label it mature plant with seed pods and draw an arrow from the plant with flowers to the plant with seed pods. Next, show students the picture of the opened seed pod and invite another volunteer to put the picture on the chart and tape it in place.
Label it seed pod and draw arrows from the plant with seed pods to the seed pod, and then from the seed pod to the seed, forming a circle. Point out that the arrows on the chart form a circle and the whole cycle now shows the life of a pea plant. Ask students, how would you describe the life cycle of a pea plant? Help students describe how a seed sprouts and grows into a seedling. The seedling grows into a mature plant that produces flowers, and then the flowers produce seeds. Finally, the seeds grow into new plants, completing the life cycle. Next, distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 9, Part B, to each student and give each team of two a pair of scissors and some glue. Instruct students to cut out the pictures and glue them in a circle format on Activity Sheet 9, Part A. Encourage volunteers to describe each stage of the life cycle. Then bring students to the distribution station and tell them to dump out their grown pea plants. Give each student a rubber band and a sheet of plastic wrap. Tell students to plant a representative amount of seeds from either their own seed pods or the pods that you have provided in the now empty planter cups. For the remainder of the module, encourage students to make regular observations of the second generation plants and report their findings to the class. Finally, inform students that in the next activity, Fruit Fly Life Cycle, they will identify the four stages of the Fruit Fly Life Cycle. To conclude the activity, return all the materials to the kit. Place the second generation plants and water sprinklers together at the designated area. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM Teacher's Guide.